Hi, it's Robin. If you watch my channel much, you know that I'm often using the Super Snapshot cartridge. This is a utility cartridge that's been around since the 80s. And I got my original box here. Features include Turbo Load and Save, Screen Dump, Memory Archiver, DOS Wedge, Pre-Programmed Function Keys, Machine Language Monitor, Reset Button, plus much, much more. Now, a couple episodes ago, I showed how the Super Snapshot can now be used on the C64, which is the modern recreation of the Commodore 64. People with original Commodore 64 computers have been asking me how they can get their own Super Snapshot, and they are tricky to track down nowadays. So today, I'm going to show you two solutions. One you can buy now. It's called the Easy Flash 3. And this can behave exactly like a Super Snapshot version 5. So I'll show you how that works in a moment. And then afterwards, I'll show you a preview of this prototype currently called Snappy 2020, which is an improved Super Snapshot made by my friend Adrian Gonzalez. This is not available for purchase yet. So we'll just take a quick preview of it and hopefully he'll finish it up soon. And one other thing I want to mention, this is the Prodigal Electric Eye record that I made a video about more than a year ago. And it's, you know, by far my most popular video. It's got, whatever, 700,000 views now. Well, doo -doo -doo, this album has now been re-released. It's been remastered. And I just got this in the mail. I haven't even opened it up yet. But it's a brand new reissue of that album. And this has happened because of how popular the video has been. What's really cool about this is there's this new write-up on the back cover. And right here, the YouTube channel 8-Bit Show and Tell gets a mention. So how cool is that, that this album would come out again? You know, just because I, I made that little video and so many of you were so interested in it. So this is now available for sale. I'll put a link in the description below. This album has not only the original Commodore 64 Easter egg on it, but it now has a second Easter egg that I, along with my friend Sam Washburn, we created it specifically for this reissue. So I think I'll be making a, a video about that soon. I'm just excited that a program I wrote is now on vinyl, and uh, I just that just blows me away. So first, the Easy Flash 3. I'll be plugging into my cartridge port expander here, not because you have to have one of these, it just makes it a little easier for you to see what I'm doing with it. And we'll power up here. So the Easy Flash 3 is available from Retro Innovations, which is run by my friend Jim Brain. And it's about 60, 65 US dollars. So when you power it up, it comes up to this menu screen. And at any point, you can re-enter this main menu by pressing the leftmost of the three buttons on it, which is labeled Menu. So it's actually got several different functions, and I'm not going to do a detailed review of it here. But up in the top left corner, you can choose up to eight different kernel replacements and my copy shipped with various C64 kernels, versions 1 through 3. I should make a video about those sometime. And also the SX64 kernel. And you can select any of those. And the Commodore 64 will boot up. So here it's now running the SX, the portable Commodore 64 ROMs. Just, I don't know, in case you want to do that. So it can store up to eight different kernel replacements, including Jiffy DOS, for example. But that still is commercially available, so I recommend you actually purchase a license for that if you're going to use it. And then over on the right-hand side, letters A through G are the seven cartridge slots that are available. So you can run up to seven different cartridge images. So, for example, I've put Prince of Persia. We'll start that just for an example. Start the game.
So if you haven't played this before, this is an amazing conversion that was just done in 2011. And it's fantastic. So you're probably familiar with Prince of Persia on on another platform if you haven't seen the C64 version before. Controls really well. So note here that the right hand button says reset. This resets the system but keeps the currently selected cartridge active. So it's as if you had a real Prince of Persia cartridge plugged in there and then hit another reset button. Of course, that cartridge would boot again. That's what the right hand reset button does. So if you want to go back to the easy flash menu, again, you press the left button. Okay, and then the reason I'm talking about this at all, we've looked at, those are the other features built into it. Down the bottom left corner, there are, well, there's four options there. Options R and Y are for two action replay cartridges, and then slot S, is for the Super Snapshot. I'm not sure why Action Replay gets two and Super Snapshot gets one. We're probably lucky to even get one Super Snapshot slot. I realize in a lot of the world, Action Replay is more popular than Super Snapshot. Super Snapshot was Canadian made, and it's the one I encountered first. And it has some superior features to Action Replay, but of course, Action Replay has a lot of strengths as well. I've already put the Super Snapshot image on here, so we just press S. And there we go, we're instantly into the familiar Super Snapshot menu. And if you just type greater than TV, that shows the version that you have. And we've got ROM version 5.22, which is the final official release of Super Snapshot. Okay, so to see how we can install those images, Again, we'll go to the menu and option P in the bottom left corner is Easy Prog. And Easy Prog is a program to flash the Easy Flash. And it really is very easy. So it's menu driven. Just press M to enter the menu. And here are a number of options. Write a CRT file to flash. If you Google around, for Easy Flash cartridge files, they'll have the CRT extension. So, for example, we can just go in here and you choose what slot you want. And then it's reading my SD card, which is back here, which I've put a bunch of files on. And here in the CRT directory I made are just a number of files like this. CRT, mountymick.crt, <laughs> favorite old game of mine. There's the Prince of Persia cartridge file. You just choose a slot, choose the file, and it goes ahead and does the flashing. And it varies on the length of the file, but it can take between maybe 10 seconds and a few minutes, depending on the size of the cartridge image. But what we're interested in here are the special options. You can write a kernel. If you had Jiffy DOS, this is where you could do it. But we're going to do this one, write Super Snapshot 5 to flash. So we'll enter here. And this is an important thing to note. In the case of these Action Replay and Super Snapshot images, do not use the CRT files. Instead, use the raw.bin files. If you're wondering what the difference is, CRT files have an extra header on them that emulators use. The BIN files are just raw binaries 
whose file size should be an exact power of 2. So 8K would be exactly 8192 bytes, or a 32K image, like these action replay images, would be exactly 32,768 bytes. And here I've got both the Super Snapshot version 522 NTSC binary or the PAL. So I'm going to flash the PAL binary on here. And away it goes. And you can see its progress. Now, of course, normally I would use the NTSC image, but just for the sake of example, I'm going to use the PAL image. Really, the only difference is in the disk drive speeder. Because of the slightly different processor speeds, NTSC runs at about 1.02 megahertz, while PAL runs at about 0.985, about 2% faster than or slower than 1 megahertz, while Commodore disk drives run at exactly 1 megahertz. And because of that, for these very tight fast load protocols, it's necessary for the code to be slightly tweaked to accommodate for that difference in speed. So that's why there are different PAL and NTSC ROMs. It only affects the disk drive access, and otherwise the code, I believe, is identical. Okay, congratulations, Rain to Flash completed. So again, we'll just go into the menu, and now I'll choose S for Super Snapshot. Exit to Basic, and again type in TV. And now we've got ROM version 5.22 PAL. Just showing that so you can see that it's actually updated. Here's my CMD 1750 512K RAM expansion unit. I'm just going to quickly try this. Okay, so we're loading up Turbo Macro Pro here. And just to show that the Easy Flash will work with the RAM expansion unit if you have one. Okay, I've already typed in a short program here. This is the equivalent of the basic 10 print program that I do all the time. Turbo Macro Pro defaults to lowercase. So loading character 142 and printing it with FFD2 switches back to uppercase. So we're just taking the low bit of a range of the kernel ROM just as a source of a random number and just shifting the low bit into the carry with rotate. Then we're loading character 205, which is one of the slashes, and adding the carry to it so it's going to be randomly 205 or 206. Really, it's just going to be a pattern of 256 characters, but this was the simplest source of random numbers I could think of. I just want to write a really short machine language equivalent of temperant. And then we increment the X register and jump around again. Okay, so let's try that. Back arrow 3 and S to start. And there we go. It's a very fast version of 10 print. By the way, even in machine language, you can use the control key to slow down printing whenever you're using that FFD2 kernel routine. The check for control is built right into it, this slowdown. Okay, and then we can reset. There we go. And SYS 320, okay, and we're back into Turbo Macro Pro. And before I forget to demonstrate it, the middle button is labeled special. In the case of the Super Snapshot or Action Replay, that is the freeze menu. You press that at any point, and the freeze menu or the subsystem menu will show up. And then all those extra functions of the Super Snapshot are available, such as pressing M to go into the machine language monitor. And we can look at memory at that F000. You can just see here the bytes of ROM that we are using as a pseudo random number generator for that machine language 10 print. On to the next thing. Okay, now to look at Snappy 2020. Again, this is by my friend Adrian Gonzalez, who I worked with on the C64DTV, along with Jerry Ellsworth back in 
2004, 2005. So Adrian's an excellent programmer, but he's also become very skilled at hardware design. And that's what this is here. He sent me this preview. So in addition to cloning the Super Snapshot, it has capabilities that go way beyond that. So it has the reset and freeze buttons here. It has this JTAG header over here on the right, and that can be used to reprogram the CPLD here. This chip here is two megabytes of flash memory. So where the original Super Snapshot has a 64K ROM, this actually has the equivalent of two megabytes of ROM space. And this has two megabytes of RAM. And that RAM is actually part of the REU function. Yes, this Super Snappy is not only a Super Snapshot clone with two megabytes of flash memory, it is also a two megabyte REU clone built right in. And here's the CPLD, which is from the same family of CPLDs that the Easy Flash has, but this is the this is the the big brother, so that the RAM expansion unit functionality could be squeezed in as well. And this is the network port. And you probably noticed that I had removed this. So this little guy is the Snappy Twenty Twenty Wi-Fi network module. Use only with a heavy-duty C64 or 128 power supply. So that just plugs in like so. It actually has the same form factor as the Easy Flash. So this particular solution, it's a 16C550 UART serial port interface to an ESP8266 wireless module. It has a real UART, which means that it should be much more efficient for the C64 to talk to this unit. But he could also make a different module to support the CS8900A, like the RRNet, 64Net, etc. uses, which has more existing C64 software support. So that's optional. Plus, if you aren't using it at all, you know, you probably just want to remove it. So it's not putting as much strain on your power supply. Okay, so we'll try it out here. Power on. So here we are. Super Snapshots boot it up, and it's just like a regular one. But Adrian's already made a couple modifications. So if we just go into basic here, and you notice that the ROM version is still 5.22, but it has TMP. Turbo Macro Pro. So if we reset, but you see here, option F5 has been added, Turbo Macro Pro. If we press F5, we will immediately go into Turbo Macro Pro, and down the bottom right corner, you notice it says 512K. It's detecting the built-in RAM expansion unit. So this card all in one is a super snapshot with a RAM expansion unit with enough storage to well, you could store many things, but a built-in Turbo Macro Pro. So just a quick example, you know, increment the border color and jump to loop back arrow three to assemble. S to start. Okay, so that's just a little program flashing the border. And here we go. If we reset and Turbo Macro Pro, and here we are back in the editor, ready to edit some more code. So this really is a complete all in one solution for programming the C64 natively. Okay, and the other big thing is if we press the freeze menu and then press M to pop into the machine language monitor. So if we go into any of the RAM expansion unit banks, here's bank zero, and we look at memory there. 
This is actually where the Turbo Macro Pro, this is the signature from Turbo Macro Pro to show that it's in use by the assembler. That's bank zero. Because this has a two megabyte RU in it, you can go all the way up to bank 1F. Well, that's full of garbage there. I'm going to fill that with BB. There we go. So I'm going to go back to bank zero just to make sure it's okay. And we'll go to bank 1E. Look at that. COPD. I actually don't know how this RAM gets initialized. I should have asked Adrian about that. But if we look at bank 1F, there it's full of the BB. So basically we have 32 different banks, each with 64K of RAM available. But this is what's really interesting. On the next bank, which is bank 2.0, and we'll look at memory zero, this is actually looking at the flash memory, which is like a big ROM. So that's just empty, but if we go to bank 3.8, so this is actually where the Super Snapshot ROM is stored. And those of you who know a bit about Commodore cartridges will notice right here is the CBM80 signature, which signifies that the cartridge is an auto boot cartridge. So this is actually the Super Snapshot ROM right here. And what's really cool about this is that Adrian's actually working on reverse engineering, disassembling that ROM so we can start to make improvements to it and get an improved version of Super Snapshot ROMs available. Additionally, he's working on an extended file system so that you can write a bunch of utilities to flash memory, just like Turbo Macro Pro, and then pull them down quickly. So essentially the RAM expansion unit is treating both the two megs of RAM and the two megabytes of flash as one big RU. Now you can't use the RU to write to flash memory, but you can of course read and write to RAM and you can read from the flash memory at REU speeds, which is a full megabyte per second. Adrian doesn't know when this project will be complete, but if you want to follow him on Twitter, I'll put a link to his Twitter in the description below. Go ahead and follow him, and I'm sure he'll post updates there from time to time. Thanks to my patrons for their support in this channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Color cycle.